Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday over here in the Atlantic. First off, I want folks to notice how the thunderstorm activity has started to increase more in the deep tropics here. Still not hyperactive in terms of convection, but we are seeing the increase in the activity due to the MJO affecting our area of the world starting to come into octant 1 and 2 in the MJO phase, and this is starting to bring more upward motion to the deep tropics, and this is going to continue, and I'll show that map later today. But this is the start of the peak of the hurricane season here, and things are going to start ramping up a lot. Uh, first off, we have the main feature today is Invest 93L in the Eastern Caribbean, actually looking pretty nice for the fact that it's in this dead zone between the Lesser Antilles and the western tip of Haiti, a zone where trade winds are generally very strong in here, and they are, and that generally ruins surface convergence, generally does not promote thunderstorm activity and does not help surface circulations become closed. And this is not closed. This has high pressures with it. If we zoom in on it here, we've got easterly winds to the south of it. We have a little bit of a southerly component to the east of the system, so there is an area of low pressure in here, but the pressures are fairly high. There's a buoy somewhere in this area that's showing a pressure of 1,013 millibars right now. So this is really not too impressive, but there is convection going off with it, and it is a tropical wave that is having to move through this dead zone and as this gets farther west, chances are we will see some more from this. It may have a chance once the winds slow down in here. You can see that the trade winds are not quite as fast. And once this gets in here, we can see this try to develop into a storm before making landfall. And you can see where the trade winds are aiming it right now. If you follow the winds, they're a straight line just north of west towards the Yucatan Peninsula, which is probably where landfall with this is going to be in a few days. And this may be something for Central America to watch. This is the European day four, showing that this finally starts to develop in the Western Caribbean here. And of course, having the European support is always nice. And it starts developing in here and brings it into the Yucatan. And again, because of the big Texas ridge up here, that's probably going to be where it goes. There is a residual weakness in the ridge over the Florida and East Gulf area, but this would have to develop very rapidly in here and become a strong hurricane to feel any kind of a northward pull from that weakness. So I think avoiding the Yucatan here is probably not possible, and this will probably move right into the Yucatan area. Once we have a more defined area of low pressure with perhaps a center de uh, developing farther back here, perhaps south of Jamaica, we'll find something more well-defined and we'll be able to nail down exactly where on the Yucatan this tries to make landfall. But right now, if you live along this coastline, I would probably be watching this closely to see if it does develop. And then by day six, it brings it on across and develops it some more in the Bay of Campeche, and this may be a double hit for Mexico, another one of those for them similar to Arlene, so we may have to keep an eye on that for those folks. And then notice this big ridge here. I know uh, you can't see my cursor. The colors on this map have changed for me. Uh, but there's this big ridge here. Notice what's behind. Coming towards the northern Antilles here. This is a tropical wave out in the eastern Atlantic, which is an area of low pressure spinning away right here southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. And again, we have a, a Saharan air layer wrapping into this. The convection is all confined to the intertropical convergence zone. However, the fact that this dry air has been knocking these waves down means that they develop farther west. And as this comes west, that means it'll be far enough south that when it develops, it could be a threat to land here. And this is what the European has for day 10. A uh, major hurricane showing up near the southeastern Bahamas. It came through the Puerto Rico area as it developed and moved on into here. And uh, this is the first time this season that the European has shown a hurricane, much less a major hurricane, on its models and several runs in a row now, which means that this is something that we may have to pay attention to when the European finally gets on board with significant development. And again, here's what we have. We have the big ridge over the central United States. We have the Atlantic Ridge out here. And then we have this break over the eastern seaboard. But again, this trough here is not sticking around. It's leaving right now on this um, this model run, this trough is leaving, which means this kind of a pattern could have this come towards the southeast United States coastline if the hurricane were in this position by day 10. And then here's where the Canadian has it by day 10, just off the southeast U.S. coastline here in 10 days. So this is the kind of pattern that we've been talking about that could bring some of these storms fairly close. And this is a long way out right here. The wave is just now leaving the Cape Verde area, but it is something that we're going to have to watch carefully because if we look at the comparison between the European and the GFS and the 8 to 10 day mean, we can see what's going on very clearly. As I mentioned before, we have a lot of troughing near Alaska and Siberia and the Gulf of Alaska right in here. This tends to pump the heights over the northern United States and southern 
Canada in here, which means that we have this break between this ridge in the west and the Atlantic Ridge to the east, right over the eastern seaboard area, but these troughs don't stick around. In fact, this particular trough is leaving in this frame and these troughs try to dig in here, but then they leave. So what it does for us is instead of having this big solid ridge in here that directs all the storms into the Caribbean, which wouldn't be good either, but if we're going to talk about the United States specifically, if we have these troughs trying to dig into the east and then moving out like this, it means that it tends to bring the storms northward for a bit, but then they tend to get caught, and thus the pattern can bring them right into the coastline before they recurve out, given this kind of a pattern. And just to drive it home, if we go to day 11, on the GFS, look what we have. The break in the ridge starts to shift westward. Now over the central Gulf Coast as the ridge is way back here. And then the Atlantic Ridge is nosing in here. And the break is right over the Gulf Coast, which opens up the Gulf of Mexico. And then we have all this blocking over the top. And there's nothing really worse in the hurricane season for the United States than the pattern where you have a break in the ridge over the coastline and then blocking directly north of it. That's just about the worst pattern you could ask for in terms of landfalls. So this is something that we're going to have to watch very closely. We're moving on into the meat of the season. And remember what I said when there was that typhoon moving up into Japan a few weeks back. All this blocking that shows up over Northeast Asia teleconnects to the blocking showing up over southern Canada during the heart of the Atlantic hurricane season. And look at where it's showing up here. This pattern is starting to show up just as history dictated here. We'll have to see if it verifies. But this kind of stuff that we've been talking about for weeks and weeks now is starting to come true, at least on the ensembles, for the next couple of weeks. And this is something that we'll have to be watched for carefully. And this is the peak of the season now. The MJO is showing a lot of upward motion for the next 15 days for uh, the Atlantic Basin. And you can see that the Pacific is shutting down, which means that the Atlantic is going to be bearing the brunt of the tropical activity and upward motion in the tropics. Something we'll have to keep an eye on because this is the peak of the season now and this is a bad time to have all this support for activity that could be affecting land masses both the Caribbean and the United States so we'll have to be watching this pattern very carefully over the next couple of weeks uh, right now number one concern invest 93 L could be something that the folks over here in the Western Caribbean specifically the Yucatan Peninsula mainly Mexico should keep an eye on in case this develops and then of course our African wave is a long way out but could be something based on the models that could threaten somebody in here or here in the long range. Something to keep an eye on. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.